Hello and welcome to game two of the Dota 2 Canada Cup brought to you by Dota2.ca. I'm MY John and we saw an amazing game one between Root Gaming and Denial Esports. Really close game. It came down to the wire in terms of who was going to pull ahead and win it. And Root Gaming were eventually able to do it. Spoiler. Sorry, I probably should say that beforehand. But if you're tuning into the live stream anyway, I assume you want to see some more good Dota action. These are two teams that have a lot of potential, of course. We've been talking about Monkeys Forever as one of the best players in North America for a long time. I mean, he really is an amazing player. And then add on to that fact that there's a couple stand-ins, world-class stand-ins at that. They looked amazing coming out of that game and weathering the storm because not the easiest thing to do, considering how well that game was going early on for Denial. Flip side, Denial Esports have to rebound here. Maybe going to look for a little bit more of a stable lineup. Here we see some of the bands and picks come out early. Let's take a look at the bands first. We see Batrider as well as Darkseer taken out by Root Gaming. Denial have taken out the Wisp and the Tree and Protector. And Denial will go back to the norm. They pick up the Nature's Prophet. They pick up the Chen. That's Mihawk's Prophet. Masoko's Chen or Misko? I don't even know. I'm such a bad commentator. I watch these guys play all the time and I forget who plays Chen. I think it's Masoku. Root Gaming <laughs> have the Shadow Demon and Gyrocopter, so... No surprise, going to favor that gyrocopter whenever they can for Monkeys Forever. He does such a great job on the hero. And Shadow Demon, an amazing support. Not much has to be said about that. There's a ban on Naga Siren. This is the opening. Denial can turn this into a lot of things. But it's the opening we usually see when they want to go for a, a Phantom Assassin pick. So wouldn't be too surprised if Denial ended up there with a PA pick in this game. Maybe Avenge, PA, something along those lines would be interesting. And then throw some kind of crazy hero middle. But let's not guess too much because who knows how it would actually turn out. Thank you for everyone that's tuning in that has been tuning in since the beginning of game one. We appreciate your support and viewership. This tournament has been a whole lot of fun. Bands coming out. We see Rubik as well as OD and Queen of Pain taken out. This is a best of five. So if we see Denial win this game, the series will be tied up 1-1. If Root win the game... They'll be one game away from clinching their lion's share of the prize pool. It's $750 prize pool provided by Dota2.ca. I think first place gets 500, second place gets 250, something like that. And definitely would be a nice little prize to take home if you are either team. So both teams are going to go all out for this. Also being able to put it on your resume that you won the Dota2 Canada Cup would be pretty cool. We see Weaver picked up here by Root Gaming. Interesting choice. Weaver, Gyrocopter, Shadow Demon. Weaver, of course, really popular with that Tree and Protector. Tree and Protector is not a part of this game right now. Still a good hero independent of him. But now you have two pretty farm-intensive heroes. If you're Denial and you're able to really ramp up the aggression... You could probably deprive one of them of getting their farm. Weaver's good without farm early on, but needs the farm to transition successfully into later stages of the game. There's the Vengeful Spirit. So, I think I get my self-esteem back by predicting that one. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the PA come up next or last. It is a hero they love to run. And Venge, of course, with that minus armor, is just really useful. Of course, opening up possibilities like an early Roche, uh, allowing you to maximize damage output from coup de gras you could even pick up something like a ta instead or the alchemist all three of those heroes in my mind are definitely prominent options here for denial and they're three heroes they love to run smash on ta or alchemist ewo on that pa we're looking for a fourth pick from root gaming though they have the weaver gyrocopter sd so part of their tri lane is there uh, uh, they're going to pick up the alchemist and now they have a really farm-intensive three-core. This has to be an Alchemist middle or Weaver middle or a Gyrocopter middle. Okay, it doesn't have to be. It looks like it would be an Alchemist middle, by my estimation. I don't know if Snaking has run it before. I know he runs some off-the-radar heroes middle occasionally. Stuff like the Doom, I've seen him take middle once in a while. So Alchemist is one of these heroes that I think he is a mid-option in certain matchups. I think there's some matchups that are really devastating for him. But the OD is out of the pool. The Quap is out of the pool. Those are two matchups that probably aren't great. Puck is still available, though. And Puck 
seems to be able to do a decent job against Alchemist. When we saw in practice, the one game it was actually there, Smash dominated a puck. So I don't know what to make of that quite yet. It's one of those one-on-ones that just haven't seen enough of to really have a full grasp of it. But definitely, potentially an Alchemist mid. Let's not go any further because they're going to end up putting that in a trial lane and I'm going to look silly. As Jarcrafter is probably going to take a middle. But Denial are going to pick up their fourth year here, add something to the Vengeful Spirit, Chen, Nature's Prophet. P-A-T-A. <laughs> Alchemist not being available. Nice. They're going to pick up the Night Stalker. Wow. Talk about aggressive. And I love this hero pickup because that silence at nighttime. If you land it on the Weaver, he's not getting time lapse off. That silence at nighttime is so strong. And if you're rolling, I mean, even the vision he just gives you, you have him coming in, Nature's Prophet coming in. It's not exactly a global strat, but your mobility compensates for a whole lot if you want to be super aggressive. And then Chen with the hand of God there to make it a little bit safer. I'm really liking this look from the four up so far. But Root on the flip side, if they can kind of hunker down a little bit, play cautiously. They have tons of mid-game potential. Alchemist, Weaver, Gyrocopter. Alchemist farms better than everybody. We know that. There's the PA ban. So somebody's doing their homework. PA banned out. Ewo will not have Phantom Assassin in this game. Denial Esports with their final ban. Uh, they're going to pick a support. Coddle. Enigma. Hmm. Visage is still available at a fifth pick. And Visage would do a good job of counteracting some of this aggression. Because not only do you have the familiars once you're level 6, and of course those can really screw up Night Stalker and his rhythm, but also coming in, piling on damage at Soul Assumption is going to hit for max damage on a lot of these aggressive looks. So I really think Visage could be a viable option for them here, but they're going to ban out a TA instead. Maybe they think it's a support alchemist. Or support Weaver, because I don't know where a Tia would fit otherwise. I guess that's a possibility. I think we've seen support Alchemist. I know Tides of Time on Digging Toss ran it a long time ago and stacked Ancients and farmed it with the Acid Spray, but I don't like personally think support Alchemist is that great. His stun isn't too reliable. He kind of needs farm to make his stun a little bit better. Acid Spray is good, but on a low mana pool as a support, Seems more troublesome than beneficial, but they do have the Shadow Team to set up his concoction, so maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Root looking for a final pick. Visage would be my guess and my top choice as well. Being available still at the fifth pick here, it's another value pick. They're going into their reserve time, deep into their reserve time at that, as they try and figure out what the best choice would be to round out their five man lineup. And try and get them on way or en route to a game to victory. Build on their early successes. If you're just joining MMI John, this is the Dota 2 Canada Cup Grand Finals. We have Root versus Denial. This is game two. I don't know why it says game one up top. It's clearly game two. As you can see, the green little indicator puts one in favor of Root. They need three to take home the lion's share of the prize pool. And they're going to pick up a clockwork here. Interesting. That makes a tri lane that can probably go aggressive. I'd assume. They have a whole lot of interesting heroes meshed together on root side. I'm going to stop saying things about it and just watch and wait. And see what they do with them. I think it could be a clock tri lane, though. Maybe. Well, it'll be featuring Weaver or Gyrocopter. Maybe they're going dual lanes. <laughs> Bringing it back. Denial Esports. Looking for their final pick here. They have the Night Stalker. They have Eventual Spirit, Chen, and Nature's Prophet. They're hypermobile. Got some global abilities. The question is, who rounds it out? Who is their hard carry? Luna's still in the pool. Juggernaut's still in the pool. Let's see the Phantom Assassin target banned, respect ban for Ewo. Taking that away from them. And they definitely would have loved to have that. Eventual Spirit. With the minus armor, throw the Phantom Assassin on top of that, get a coup de gras, and it's good day to whomever receives that damage. But instead, they'll have to try and find a different carry. 
exploring the pool, trying to think of what would be the best option. They are running out of time now. Eight seconds until the reveal is here. And it's going to be a Dragonite. It's a hero I thought about, but doesn't really fit as seamlessly. You have two strength heroes. You don't have any agility heroes outside of the eventual spirit. These aren't late game heroes. Night Stalker and Dragonite fall off tremendously. But, we spoke to the aggression of Root Gaming side. Oh, uh, excuse me, spoke to the greediness of Root Gaming side. Three farming heroes. Alchemist, Weaver, and Gyrocraft, it looks like at a glance. They may be all in on this early game aggression, Denial Esports, to try and really bring the fight to Root and win it that way. Smash is going to be on the Dragonite, putting Ewo on the Night Stalker, which means we might see a Night Stalker tri lane come out here, which would be a rather interesting lane. Night Stalker needs levels, so I don't really approve of this, but it, it still would allow him to get some farm, maybe pick up something like an armlet early on in the game, which would be nice to have going towards that first night. Let's go ahead and switch these. So thank you everyone that's tuning in. I'm Amai John. This is the Dota 2 Counter Cup Grand Finals Game 2. We're about to get started on Root Gaming side, the Dire team. We see two heroes haven't been selected up, which is a little bit unfortunate, but they should be ready to go momentarily. There's no pause. We have Monkeys Forever playing the Gyrocopter. Heading towards the bottom lane, we have Sky on that clockwork. Natural, the support player on the Alchemist. So it is going to be a support Alchemist, it looks like. Interesting. Makes this team a little bit less greedy. Snaking on the Weaver. He's going to be going middle with that. And Taku on the Shadow Demon. Meanwhile, aggressive denial side. They're our Radiant team. We have Iwo playing the Night Stalker. Misko on the Ventral Spirit. Masuko on the Chen. Sorry, I was right. No need to worry. Mihawk on the Nature's Prophet. And Smash playing the Dragonite. This is a very bulky team from Denial. Early game, it's going to be hard to damage them. Dragonite is, of course, a tanky hero. He's going to have that Dragon's Blood up in all likelihood. He's going to weather, weather a lot of damage. We also have Night Sucker, a strength hero with good strength gain. You can see early on, he already has 700 health, pretty much. And the, with pulling and such, the support's going to be able to give him a good amount of experience down here. On the flip side... They're going to try and make a safe trial lane that's going to get Monkeys Forever his farm on the top. You could see, based off the amount of regen he has, it looks like they didn't anticipate an aggressive trial lane. It would have been one crazy looking aggressive trial lane, so I didn't anticipate it either. Both teams are going to play it safe, and then they're going to wait for the first night and try and have Ewo erupt. Now, I talked about it last game. Denial, they're such talented players. Maybe if they go for more orthodox picks, if they pick up a normal carry in some of these instances, they'd have more success, but... They're going to play it their way, which is respectable as well. And Root are going to play it their way with a support alchemist. Interesting choice. He's going to go ahead and try and pull here. Definitely try and pull through. The Treants are going to do what they can to try and interrupt that. Look at our early CS. We see mid lane Weaver is actually a really strong hero. I think oftentimes it gets underrated for whatever reason. But Dragonite against her, he's relying on the Breathe Fire anyway to get CS. So it's not as if Dragonite is going to be too worried. As long as he's not up against OD, he can fare decently against most. There's a pause to try and fix something. But we're back into the game. Smash is taking a fair bit of harass damage here. I would love to see bugs get prioritized, maybe after level 2 Sakuchi. If you're this weaver, if you're snaking right now. Definitely could be powerful. Natural is going to kill off the Treants. They didn't get to pull through, but it looks like it still worked out pretty well for them. Sky's looking for trouble. He walks into Misko. Misko's just going to apply some harass damage to him as they back up. Clockwork picked level 1 Rocket Flare. That's really greedy, really risky. Into middle lane is the Seder. He's going to go ahead and give Smash a little bit of regen ore, but Smash sitting at full health doesn't necessarily need that. Instead, he'll use it for harass, maybe, to apply some pressure to Weaver, and it'll be his little buddy laner. There it is. It throws off a blast, and they're just going to resummon him. Looking at the top lane, it looks like Mihawk is having a pretty good time up here. I mean, the wave is pushed out towards him. He is still level 1. Here's the engage. Monkeys Forever with the rocket barrage on top of him. Mihawk dropping down pretty low. Do they try and dive this? The rocket's coming in, and they will get first blood. So, Caster's commentator's curse 
It looked like the wave was coming towards him. He looked like he'd be okay. Nope. Disruption into the rocket barrage, and it's too much damage for Mihawk to stomach. And now under the tower, he's getting dove a little bit here. Monk is forever looking to apply pressure. Here's the auto attacks. He's not going to put the rocket barrage on yet. Now standing next to him, thinking about it. But Monkeys Forever is dropping low. There could be a response kill. There's a sprout, and the tower comes in. Last hit, and an awful play by Monkeys Forever. And that's Mihawk, a return kill on the top lane. I also hear a concoction boiling, and it actually will just destroy Alchemist as they were trying to smoke into the lane, it looks like. Don't know what wrong went wrong there, but I know what, what went wrong in the lane. Too far of a dive for Monkeys Forever. Really underestimating Nature's Prophet. And now Nature's Prophet's level 3. Level 4, in fact. Out of nowhere. And that's exactly what you did want to see. Because Clockwork's only level 3. He's having a decent time down bottom. But giving up that free money. Giving up a response collector. Such a well-executed first blood. Not what Root wanted there. So they're going to be a little bit ashamed of that. Monkeys Forever has to revisit his ideas on being super aggressive. Maybe pull back a little bit more. He's just excited he gets to the farm without contention this game. Doesn't even know what to do with it. Middle lane with see Smash getting the Bottle Crow, of course. Allows him to keep up his CS. So a ping coming out. But there's actually but nobody there. We see him 14-1 against 14-1. So dead even middle lane matchup for both these heroes, which is really boding well for both teams. These are two heroes that, you know, if they don't get kills, so what? And uh, Snaking, I said I wanted to see him get bugs. He's actually opting for the opposite. Getting an extra level in Germany attack, which I don't think is that great early on in the game. And the bugs are amazing. And they counteract a lot of what Dragon Blood does. They also deal some decent jet damage, really, if you get a couple levels up in it. But Snaking knows what he's doing. And he's going to go the other route. Taku's going to run into Smash in the river here. Smash is going to pop off the Dragon form. In comes Sky from the side. He gets the regen rune. Smash is going to be a little bit disappointed. The regen room would have been nice. He has the bottle crow instead now. Middle lane. The sentry is up. In fact, two sentries are up. And now Snaking is well aware of it as he's taking some damage from this dragon. And in fact, it's going to bully him out of the lane. So a great job by Denial to get up this vision early on to ease the burden of this middle lane matchup for the Dragonite. Top lane, the CS on Monkeys Forever, probably because of that death, is just a little bit worse than the CS on Ewo. This farming Night Stalker, already level 6, he's trying to get huge. He's trying to be monstrous by the time they hit the first night. And then that's probably the timing that he'll take to actually leave the lane. But this is an interesting build. He doesn't scale well to late game. I suppose in theory he could, because he does have pretty good abilities that allow him to scale. I mean, Hunter in the Night. His silence is amazing. But, Night Circuit typically doesn't. He doesn't farm well. That's the main problem. If you want to carry Hero, you need somebody that farms at a pretty good rate. Tower Top is taking some damage as we see a dive middle is putting pressure on Snaking, but he's just is able to Sakuchi away from there. And now we see Mihawk in trouble. He's going to be hit by a concoction here in a moment. That's going to be enough to kill him off. The response is there. Iwo comes in, makes it nighttime. Jumping on top of Taku. He has to get out of the cooldown, though. And now Iwo. Getting turned around on Monkey's Forever with a Rocket Barrage. But no one else came in with him. Otherwise, that could have been a kill. If he just had a little bit more help. Just decided to leave the lane. And doesn't get anything out of it. So that's a little bit bad result for Denial. Root getting a kill. Plus a lot of damage on this tower. It's already down to below half. They're going to be pretty satisfied with that. Middle lane. They jump on top of Snaking. And Smash is able to solo Snaking without Dragon Form. Hits him with that Dragon Tail stun in the Breathe Fire. And snaking with a big mistake there. Mistakes seem to be the theme of the game right now. Bottom lane, Misko. They're going to jump on top of Sky. Sky's going to ease his way out of the trees, though. He should be just fine. Mihawk came in, threw down the sprout, but it wasn't enough. Now Dragon Form going to be popped to pressure this tower, and this is exactly what you don't want. Corrosive Breath on the tower after getting a kill. Smash is going to be able to take this tower down so low by himself. Doesn't want to put in deny range, though. There actually is a rotation in from Night Stalker. If he can get the silence off, it's real nighttime now. He's looking for the silence. Nope, oh, doesn't find it. And then they're going to commit hold to this tower. They use the glyph. They get the Dragon Tail stun off. Weaver's in trouble. Weaver's dead. Weaver's dead. Concoction comes in. They're trying to get a turnaround. Ewo gets stunned off. The tower goes down. Vengeful Spirit getting that tower kill. There's disruption to get the 
Dragon Knight. Ewan on the back end fighting Taku. Able to kill him. Dragon Tail's not a monkey's forever. He's in a little bit of trouble here. But Ewan standing in that acid spray. Needs to back up. Two kills and a tower kill so far. But Smash does get taken down in response. Monkey's Forever is going to die to the urn charge. Three for one trade. There's the concoction. Natural is going to try and connect with this auto attack, but he can't quite get there. Threat of a TP from Nature's Prophet also in play. Masuku's going to run into... Oh my god, Chen versus Clockwork. And Clockwork can't stand his ground against Chen. The Nature's Prophet is trying to find somewhere to come into. He should definitely try and finish off this clock. Does not have level six, though. So he doesn't really have much damage to offer. But an amazing fight for Denial there. Uh, and bottom lane, it looks like Mihawk could be in trouble. Snaking jumping on top of him, but he's going to just go ahead and TP home. Safe thing to do, right thing to do. Coming out from Mihawk on that Nature's Prophet. He's starved for farm, he's starved for experience, but he can't push it too hard. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the map, looking at some of these item pickups. I, I mean, we see Monkeys Forever picking up his Ogre Club. He's on a better track than he was last game, but that death middle definitely wasn't necessary, I believe. Misko is going to get hit here by the cooldown. He's going to stun on his way out. Free kill for Monkeys Forever. Gyrocopter picking up a kill. He's now 4-2. and two. Let's look at net worth. Yeah, he's leading the way in net worth as well. So Monkeys Forever, despite or two bad deaths, I'd say, still having a pretty good game. Snaking comes in the bottom lane. He's going to harass Iwo a little bit with Sakuchi damage. He still hasn't picked up Jer uh, the Swarm. Swarm is a really good ability, especially against these tanky targets. We're talking about 8 base armor or whatever, maybe. Uh, I feel like Swarm could only help. And now this tower is going to face some pressure as Dragonite comes in from the back end, pops off the green dragon for him. And Ruder got to look for a trade. They're going to try and go for the tier 1 up top. Monkeys Forever is here as well as Taku and Sky. They're going to come into the tower. The tower is already pretty low there, but the bottom tier 1 has dropped. Now still a, a good duration left on the dragon form. They're going to go towards this tier 2. They bring in Chen as well. A couple of Chen creeps are going to help this effort. And they're going to get 2 for 1 trade in all likelihood. Unless there's a big response from Root. And here's a stun. It's actually going to stop Sky from pursuing Misko. Misko still maybe getting caught out here. Here's the TP back home from Smash. He goes on top of Taku. Taku's going to get finished off by Iwo with that void. And they decide not to take the tower. Take it down low instead. And rotate up top. Get a kill. And save their tower. This tower is 155. Not an iron range yet. But they saved it. And now Invisible Smash. This is a smoked up Night Stalker Dragonite combo. Coming middle looking for snaking. But silence is so devastating on an early game weaver. And at nighttime, the silence lasts for five seconds, of course. It can max out to less for eight seconds. That's a huge duration of silence. And one of the little bonuses that a lot of people don't know is that miss. 10%, uh, 40% miss at night. For the duration is mm, five seconds, right? I just said that. So that's a long duration for 40% miss. Definitely something to take into consideration. I want to thank everyone that's watching. We're ten and a half minutes into the second game of the Grand Finals of the Dota 2 Counter Cup. He was getting called off here by Cox. He's going to turn around and try and find some way out of here. He is mighty fast because it is the nighttime, but disruption is going to make him a little bit slower, and they'll still leave him alone. He's going for an Agonims. So this is a little bit surprising. I talked about this before. When you're farming the Night Stalker, I'd imagine you want to go for a damage output item that would help him out transition a little bit better into later stages of the game. Agnims doesn't do that. It's a really aggressive item. It's a great item. It has tremendous upside. Smash is going to try and hide here. Natural is going to stun himself, and the tower gets denied by Shadow Demon. So good play. And they're actually going to come in and look for this kill onto the Alchemist. There's the silence on Taku. And Taku's going to drop first. Chen's creep trying to make his way out of here. Snaking wants to kill him. Shouldn't want to kill him that much, though. He's going to actually have to time lapse back towards the base. But if you want to make him into a hard carry, if you want to make Night Slurk into a hard carry, you're going to need to put some bulky items on him. Something like an armlet, maybe into a basher, abyssal. Make him hit harder. Agonus is not going to do that. As we see, that is going to be his first item choice. He already has the Ogre Club now, so he's 2,000 gold away. I do like it in terms of aggression. Don't know if I like it. In being... I don't know, cognizant of the fact that this game could go late. There's some good turtling abilities on the side of Root. I mean, the call down, disruption, cogs, 
they could try to drag this out, and if they do, they have a lot of carries to fall back on. So that's probably Root's game plan right now. They're smoking up a little bit. Natural and Shadow Demon are trying to rotate in here somewhere, find an opening on the hero. They're going to go towards the top lane, spot off the Night Sucker. Night Sucker, unsuspecting in lane, picks up a TP scroll. He has 1,700 health. He's not going to be an easy target to kill. They're going to start charging this off. Alchemist is going to throw down the acid spray. There's the stun on the edge of the call down. And Ewo's dropping. Rocket's going to come in. Big ultimate from Nature's Prophet. Ewo is going to die. Great gank there. And now they're going to turn around. Smash double damage on top of this Alchemist. Alchemist stands no chance. Stun comes out of Monkeys Forever. He's going to drop in one more auto attack. If they can catch up to him. Breathe fire up in four more seconds. There it is. Dragon form. Red Dragon going to pick off the Gyrocopter from the back end. Mihawk comes in. An amazing hook out. Such swagger from Sky. And he's just going to continue walking on. Good day, sir. But Smash Meanwhile is going to put pressure on this tower. And it's a fourth tower kill for Denial. One along the way being denied. A little bit ironic, I know. A little bit of a pun. But either way, four towers down. They've only lost one in return. They want to be aggressive. They're being aggressive. Root want to be a little bit more passive. But losing the Gyrocopter in that fight, not having the BKB... It's huge. That's the same story as last game, really, except this BKB is on a much better trajectory in terms of when he's going to get it. Uh, I mean, we're only 13 and a half minutes into the game, so he's still looking at the BKB in two or three minutes, really. But same story. Needs that BKB to be up. He's taking way too much magic damage. Way too many disables he has to sit through. They need to create space for him to farm. It's daytime now. Maybe this is their opening. Evo is going to be less effective for certain. He's also 1,300 away from his Aghanim still. So he's going to look to try and find his farm. He's going to need that Aghanim by the next night time to really make the most out of it. Doesn't want to waste any of that night duration. Dragon Knight is going to pick up a Shadow Blade after that last fight. Also picks up an Invis Room. So Invis on Invis on Invis stacks. If you use it twice, you can't be detectable by dust, of course. JK. Taku in the middle lane is going to get hit here by the Dragon Tail. In comes the damage from the Wrath of Nature. He gets a disruption off with low health, 51 health, and the auto attack from Smash will finish him. Vengeful gets hit with a Demonic Purge. They're thinking about counter-initiating here, but that would be a bad idea. In fact, Sky's going to get spotted off. He's going to get stunned by the Magic Missile, and now Sky's the next target. Smash, Dragon Form up in a couple seconds. Sky going down. He's actually going to drop. Cold down in the middle of the fight. It's going to get a swap out. And everyone's still alive on the side of Denial. Stun comes off on top of Snaking. Snaking going to get hit by a Void. He's going to be able to time lapse, though. Gets netted up. Can't do anything on the back end of the fight. Smash taking a good amount of damage. Stun flies from Natural onto one of the supports. Snaking goes to Kuchi. He's going to back off. Two kills for Denial. Root unable to find any kills for themselves. Until maybe now the, the missile is on top of Mihawk. And it's going to stun him long enough for Snaking to clean him up. On the back end, though, Smash and Ewo. Are able to pick off Alchemist. As well as Shadow Demon dying. And somewhere in the mix of that. The Vengeful died as well. Chaotic fight, but the kill leads 15 to 7 in favor of Denial over Root. 15 minutes into the game. It's another early aggressive game. The type of Dota you love to watch. In the Dota 2 Canada Cup Grand Finals. Both of these teams well deserving of their spots in these finals as they've proven game in and game out, really. Invisibility popped by Dragonite. He's trying to retreat a little bit here. And they're fighting so frequently that Dragonite doesn't have the Dragon Form at the beginning of these fights in all of them. Take a look at Snaking and see what he's doing. This is a typical Weaver build, of course, going for the drums. And he's able to finish this off really early as well. 1,200 more gold in the bank. So whatever he wants to go for next, nice double damage rune. That's going to be a pretty little present. Whatever he wants to go for next is going to be developed soon. Smoke up on the three non-carries for Root. And they're going to try and bait somebody out here in the bottom lane, but you can see on the minimap, there's no one down here. This is going to be a tall ask. Top lane, Weaver is able to use that double damage and take down Nature's Prophet. And Nature's Prophet has been the sore spot for Denial. Mihawk's had a tough time in lane. He did get up his... Oh, here we go. And they're going to fully commit to this Dragonite right now. Dragonite doesn't matter. They have invis detection. He's going to drop. Smash is dead. 100% for certain. Gyrocopter getting that kill. Doesn't matter how tank you are when you're up against all four heroes. And they're throwing absolutely everything at you. And now on top of that kill, Root get a tower. So great s sequence for them there. 
able to net a good amount of gold. And that was after gold lead looked like it was hitting up to 7,000, probably more around six and a half. Experience lead was getting up to a higher margin as well, so a much needed kill. And Dragon Knight's going for a BKB and actually see he picks up an Ogre Club. Root don't look like they're going to stop. They're going to push on to this tier two. Tier two. It's going to get fortified, and they're just going to back up now. Don't want to press any harder. There's the Aghanim Scepter completed, so it's going to be ready for the next night time. And now there's a, a fair bit. I mean, that's the third tower for Root. And they just got it. Four towers have been down for denial. But they're starting to close that small gap. And now Muggies Forever, though, is regressing. He gets caught out here. Invisible Smash. Going to Dragon Tail him. And Night Sucker picking up that kill. He uses the nighttime as well. He's going to spot off Naturel middle. And that's just the vision it gives him. I mean, we can look at the vision. Radiant Vision. Look at how ridiculous his Aghanims is. Look at what he can see. And now Taku gets focused here. Let me go ahead. They jump on top of Snake King next. Two heroes dead. Buybacks across the board. Muggies Forever back into the middle of the fight. Pops off his BKB and the call down. But no one is dying from denial. And now Muggies Forever is going to get hit by the Void. He's going to back up a little bit. Natural gets sprouted. He's going to be focused down here. Can they kill him? He has a stun. Throws it out on Chen. Chen gets swapped away. Chen surviving, but he will die to the flat cannon damage. Mihawk is going to be bullied around by Sky, but they're able to kill off Gyrocopter for the second time. And now the Sprout catches Sky. He gets magic missiled, and he will die to the void. Double kill for EWO. 22 to 10 in favor of Denial over Root in game two. And Smash working on the tier two tower. It's down. And they're going to look to the base. They're going to look to the base. Just another amazing fight for them. They forced the buyback out of Gyrocopter. And Gyrocopter couldn't do enough by himself. They didn't have the buyback on the Weaver, who died early on there. They needed that secondary damage from the Weaver to really have a shot at taking that fight. These heroes are so tanky. And that's the flip side. They don't have a real hard carry to fall back on in the later stages of a game. But in the early game, you have to try and get through almost 2,000 health on Night Soccer, 1,500 health on Dragonite, plus... 20 armor, 11 armor, and Night Stalker. These are ridiculous numbers to try and cope with when you don't have farm. I want to thank everyone that's tuning in. I'm Emma John. This is the Dota 2 Counter the Cup Grand Finals. Game 2. Spoiler, in Game 1, Root were able to destroy Denial. Uh-oh, smash on the top lane. Going to find out snaking in that silence. It's going to prevent him from time-lapsing or getting out of there. In game one, Root were able to weather the storm that was Denial and end up taking a victory. Game two, it looks like Denial able to turn this around after a couple of questionable situations. Able to turn it around. And it looks like they have a lead right now. 23 to 10, they certainly have a kill lead. The graph shows us the gold is there, the experience is there, Sunflies on Smash, Acid Spray is there. Here comes Sky into the middle of the fight, Smash doesn't have his BKB, he's going to Dragon Tail stun off somebody, he pops the invis, the sentries are down though. He's just trying to make it out, but he's not going to. That is far too much damage for one Dragonite to tank by himself. So Smash getting caught out in a bad position, just as I try and say that Denial have a lead. Wants to try and prove me, prove me wrong. Ewo on the middle lane, sitting on 3,300 gold. So small fortune, really. Does he go for... Yup, he's going to go straight for the heart. And they have trouble killing off some of these heroes. We saw what it took for them to kill off Dragonite in the top lane. Well, get the heart. It's going to be even more difficult to try and deal with stuff like the Night Sucker. But that's going to mean they have to close out this game before Gyrocopter gets that second item. Before he gets the MKB or whatever it may be, the damage output item. That is going to be crucial. Otherwise, these heroes are going to be much less effective... And Gyrocopter is going to be really strong. Here we go, middle lane. They're pushing out a little bit as well. Shikuchi threw a couple of the targets. They're going to come over to the side, find Chen. Chen's actually doing a fair bit of damage. Huge Wrath of Nature going to hit everybody. Chen's going to drop, though. And now for the back end, Iwo comes in the fight. He's on top of Taku, but they jump on top of him. Iwo surviving because he is so bulky. So bulky. He's just going to go ahead and run out. A little bit of over-pursuit. Dragon Tail stun is going to be here. It's going to catch off Sky. Sky's in trouble. Uphill misses from Smash. He's going to rotate uphill and breathe fire. Should be enough to finish that off. Gets them a kill on S Sky. Four-step forward from Misko. 
That's a luxury item to have on that support hero. 25 to 12 is our kill lead. Iwo not dying there. And now we see a BKB going to be up on this Dragonite. Dragonite did have to pop off his Dragon form. So that's going to be wearing off before he really gets to make the most out of it. Monkeys Forever is going to be spotted here. And Iwo is going to jump on him. Low health doesn't matter. Hand of God comes in. Snaking is going to pursue a little bit. And he's going to time lapse back to play it safe. Smash is going to get a Dragon Tail stun on Taku. Taku's going to disrupt himself to try and stay alive. Iwo gets the silence off on top of Snaking. Down goes Taku. He's the first casualty. Second casualty is Snaking. Swap is going to bring Monkeys Forever out into a bad position. Smash is looking for the damage, but Misko has to back up. Smash has to back up. They're all pretty low on health. Naturel is continuing to pursue. There's BKB popped by Smash. Naturel is going to drop. Snaking looking for a kill. Can't find anybody quite yet. He's going to get silenced and back away here. And now the Wrath of Nature yet again is going to deal a good amount of damage. One more avoid will steal the deal. But can they find him? They don't have detection. Snaking's going to pop out in a moment. And Dragon Tail stun. Breathe fire. He's dead. Smash still alive. Ewo still alive. They don't have anything to interrupt this TP right now. As the Magic Missile is going to chase him all the way back to base. A three for none team fight, I believe. Did they kill anybody? No. What a team fight for Denial. They go all out aggressive, and they're doing it right, man. Root Gaming need to find something to stop the pain train that is Denial Esports right now. Misko's looking for a swap, finds Taku. And it's a hard, hard life. That's 10 deaths on that Shadow Demon. Just not the game to be a support player. Tower's being focused now. Blue Dragon form on Dragonite. And that's going to be really tough to deal with. See, Acid Spray is down. It's annoying some of these heroes. Ewo's trying to regen up outside of the Acid Spray. TP in. They're going to back up, though. There's the Swarm from Snaking. Doesn't hit on anybody, and everybody's trying to back up. Sentry drop. Magic Missile on Snaking. Chaining it up with the Dragon Tail, and Snaking's almost dead. He gets the time lapse off in time. And this is huge for Root. They're able to get one kill onto the Vengeful Spirit. Smash is stuck in the middle of Cox. He's going to go down. Or is there no detection? He's going to use his Shadow Blade and try and back off. He's just barely surviving. And a little bit of a juke keeps him alive. Oh, and that could have been amazing for Root if they can kill that Dragonite, but they can't. Smash lives. He's 10-3. and Evo's 10-1. And, and Evo, after having a subpar last game, is really up the ante this time around. We also see him picking up that heart recipe and the courier getting jacked from him subsequently. Actually, he's just going to bring the recipe over because he's close to the secret shop. He's 150 gold away from the completed heart. And, I mean, he's going to have 26, 2700 health with amazing regen. 13 gold away, double damage rune in the river. Roshan is available. They're going to go ahead and get that heart. One, two, there it is. Heart completed on Night Stalker. Let's take a look at our net worth. I already have it up. 12,000, almost 12,500 gold for Eo. He's the top net worth in the game, as you would suspect. 10, 1, and 8. What a line. And second is Smash at almost 12,000 as well. Last hits. Show Gyrocopter in first, but Gyrocopter can't compete with the fact that there's double digit kills on a couple of these heroes. Wrath of Nature flies out. They know they're in the Roche pit because the missile spotted them, but Roche is going to go down nonetheless. Night Circle going to pick up an Aegis that he probably doesn't need. And they're going to try and force this fight. Smash Invisible charging in. Blue Dragon on top of Taku. Taku, 11 death of the game. Call down to try and slow them. Naturel gets caught inside of the middle of a sprout. He's going to be hit hard. Mihawk is going to get healed by the hand of God, but will not survive. The missile comes in from Clockwork. will kill him. There's the BKB for Monkeys Forever trying to retreat, but slowed by the Blue Dragon. He's going to die as well. And now in the base, Sky, last man standing, is going to get jumped on by Ewo. He's going to try and TP home, and we'll make it home successfully. And this looks like it's going to be a Rax. Maybe two Raxes in favor of Denial. It looks like we're about to have an even series on our hands. GG, well played is the call from Monkeys Forever. And Denial even it up at 1-1 in the series with a pretty wild looking lineup. Super aggression, 35 kills in 26 minutes. Big victory for them. Now Root Gaming are on the flip side and they have to try and find a response.
Thank you for tuning in. I'm Emma John. This is the Dota 2 Canada Cup brought to you by Dota2.ca. I appreciate your viewership and have appreciated it throughout the entirety of the tournament. We're in the finals. Root versus Denial. We're about to have Game 3 come up, but while you have some time between games, be sure to head over to Twitter. Follow me at Emma John TV. Be sure to head over to at Dota 2 Canada. Follow them as well for hosting this tournament. And if you can spare the dollar, purchase up an in-game ticket. Support this organization. It is privately funded tournament. $750 prize pool. That's pretty amazing. And these two teams are still fighting over it. They're going hard at each other. At each other's throats. And now we have a tie series. 1-1. It's going to take two more wins for either team to win it. Be sure to stay tuned and watch the rest of the games with us. We're having a good time today. We'll see you guys when the next game is available. Thank you for watching.